Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Latinx picture books that I recently read. I did a wrap up of these, of the books that I read last year and I feel like a lot of people really enjoyed it, wanted to see more. So I'm giving the people what they want in this video. I'm really excited to share them with you all because I feel like a lot of the diversity that is happening in publishing and literature is happening actually in kids lit right now and I wanna see more of it on booktube. So I'm not gonna be discussing these books in any particular order except that I read them in this order. So that's kind of where and how my mind processes these things so let's just go ahead and get started the first picture book I want to tell you about is called the best mariachi in the world this picture book has both English and Spanish in it it has a couple of Spanish words interspersed in it's written by JD Smith and it is illustrated by Danny Jones so this one is not on voices but it's a really charming story about this main character here named Gustavo who comes from a family of mariachi musicians he tries to play instruments. He tries to play the trumpet and the violin. He's not very good at anything, so he feels like he doesn't fit in until one day he discovers that his talent is actually in his voice and his singing voice specifically. Uh, one night he's out in the desert singing to himself and he finds his talent is actually in his voice. And there's a really pretty depiction of the Mexican landscape, what looks like the Mexican desert. I don't think it's explicitly stated, but I think that that's kind of what the art style was going for. And I really love this. Uh, I think that the art style in this in particular does a very good job of demonstrating Gustavo's emotions. It's a very warm color palette that goes very well with the specific landscapes included with uh, Gustavo's frustrations with not being a part of his family, but wanting to be. Um, with his joy at finding his true talent and uh, people appreciating that talent. And although there is some Spanish interspersed in this, I think that it's in a way that is very easy to follow for novice Spanish readers. So this was a really great first book to jump into. The next picture book that I want to tell you about is called Planting Stories, uh, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller Puro Belpre. This is written by Anika Denise and it's illustrated by Paula Escobar. And Denise is Puerto Rican from New York. So this is on voices for that representation. And Escobar is a Colombian artist out of Bogota. And this is a picture book all about um, Puro Belpre, who immigrated to the United States to New York City from Puerto Rico in the early 1920s. Upon arriving, she became the first Puerto Rican Latinx librarian in the New York Public Library. And she was a very influential bilingual um, librarian that was also a puppeteer and a storyteller. And she really curated the Latinx Spanish speaking um, sec section of that public library, which was really important to the then Spanish speaking community. So I knew of Puro Belpre because of the award that was created in homage to her and her influence. That's an award that is given annually to Latinx book writers in kids lit and youth lit for having outstanding Latinx representation. So last year, for example, the award went to the Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo for the literature aspect of the award. And for illustrations, it went to Dreamers by Yuyi Morales, which are both books that I loved. So I really wanted to find out more about the inspiration for this great award. So this book is beautifully illustrated. I loved all the small details and all the little ways that I got to learn more about Belpre. There's also an author note at the end that gives more details about the biography and the research and resources that were used and other additional notes and resources that you can look into more if you want to find out more. And I'm also going to be linking a video down below if you want to hear the book read by the author and hear a little bit about some Q&A questions that she gets from kids about this book. So I highly recommend this book. I really loved it and enjoyed it. And then uh, it wouldn't be a picture book wrap up if I didn't mention Duncan Tonatua who I really enjoy and I read Danza and this is the story of Amelia Hernandez and El Ballet Folklorico de Mexico. And this is a author illustrator that I really enjoy because of his pre-Columbian, very unique art style. Duncan Tonotua is an award-winning Mexican artist and author. This book in particular tells the story of Amelia Hernandez who 
was a young girl in Mexico that wanted to be a teacher, but through training and dance and from traveling throughout Mexico and studying the other regional dance styles, created the first folklorico dance company in Mexico. So this is a biography picture book, another nonfiction biography picture book. You're gonna be seeing a lot of those because I love them. They're really great accessible histories into Latinx culture that I, th I think are really important for kids and for adults like myself that don't have that exposure to that history. I was particularly excited to see some of the indigenous influences to her dance style. She mentions the yaki, which my grandmother is descended from, so that's nice to see. So again, I really like this art style. It's inspired by traditional indigenous glyphic art traditions. And I think that Duncan Otutua also won, has been won. Um, oh yeah, look, it says it was a Puro Bel Pre award winner. So again, he won that award and I think that's really highly deserved. And this also has an author's note at the end if you wanna know more about Amelia Hernandez's life and have some additional resources. So another great book. So the next book I have to talk about actually marks the beginning of my Latinexathon reading and it is Tito Puente Mambo King, El Rey de Mambo. This is from Monica Brown, who is a Peruvian American author and Rafael Lopez, who is a Mexican illustrator. This is another biography about Tito Puente, who is well-renowned as a king of music. He was very influential on Latin jazz music, worked with a lot of very influential artists like Celia Cruz and Santana, won a number of Latin Grammy awards, and I really liked this book. This book has also been awarded a Bel Pre Award, so that's nice to know. Puente grew up banging on pots and pans, and it, this really just follows him from childhood all the way to being a Latin Grammy Award winning artist. It's a story that's very vibrant in both language and art style with the colors that are included. The art was created with acrylic paint, and I think that that really shines through with how this story comes to life. I really think that it just brilliantly, brilliantly and vibrantly displays his talent as an artist. So this is another great book that you could pick up. The next book that I have to tell you about is called Julian is a Mermaid by Jessica Love. This is probably my favorite of the whole bunch. It's just so beautifully illustrated and it's just such a very heartwarming story of acceptance and a relationship between an Afro-Latinx boy and his abuela. This is a story that is much less about mermaids and much more about tolerance and acceptance and love. The illustrations in this in particular really are lush and jump from the page. They are drawn on brown paper, which I read was a decision that Love made after writing it on white paper. She completely redrew the whole book on brown paper, which I think was an excellent choice. It really goes well with the pastel colors and the water imagery and of course the mermaids. And it's the kind of book that doesn't need a lot of text that really lets the images speak for themselves. And I love that. Love is uh, an artist from New York City. So this is not own voices, but she was inspired to write this story from an interview that I read about um, when one of her family members came out as trans and after watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race. So I really love this and I recommend you pick it up. Next up, I read All the Way to Havana by Margarita Engel and it is illustrated by Mike Carato. This is a picture book from a Cuban American author and it's about this family that is traveling from their rural city town to Havana, to the city for a birthday party. And it's about the car that they drive in which is at times failing them, but is also their beloved car. So they have to innovate to make it work with some of the parts that they have and some of the mechanics and fixings that this little boy has to do with his parents. Along the way, traveling to Havana, they see the vibrant uh, culture there, the vibrant people, all the cars on the highway. And I really enjoyed the illustrations in this book, which were done after Carazzo visited Cuba and he used uh, photos and pencils, and it's a mixture of pencil, color pencils and textures and these vibrant photos. And I think to me, this story is most about the Cuban people's resilience and ability to innovate, although they are in this situation that is a bit unfair because of the US embargo that was placed on Cuba for so long that wouldn't allow the trade of goods. They had to make the cars that they had there work and had to make them work for them and still live their lives. And I think that this story really captures that sort of sentiment. 
Next up, I have Just Ask, Be Different, Be Brave, Be You by Sonia Sotomayor, and it's illustrated by Rafael Lopez. This is a book from a Puerto Rican uh, justice, court, uh, Supreme Court justice, the first Latinx uh, Supreme Court justice who's currently sitting on the bench and from a Mexican artist. Again, Rafael Lopez is, uh, this is his second time being featured in this video. This is a book that was inspired by Sotomayor herself, who was uh, diagnosed as a child with type 1 diabetes. It's a very rare form of diabetes and she is insulin dependent. She has to inject herself daily. And that has been something that she's been struggling with her whole life. I know that because I'm currently reading her uh, memoir called My Beloved World. She talks a lot about it in that book. And I knew when I heard about this book, which is a new release, actually just came out this September. And I wanted to read that. And it's a story that follows these children that are building this plant community garden. And like the garden with all its unique plants and vegetation, all the children are also unique. The message here I think is to just ask someone if they are doing something differently or if they are different and then listen to what they have to say and accept them for being different. So this book really uh, highlights each of those children that is telling their story or how they are doing something differently than someone else. So there's a child in here that's uh, deaf. There are two children in here that are blind, one with a guide dog, one with a walking stick. Um, there's a child that has Tourette's and a child that has a wheelchair and a child that has ADHD. So a number of different uh, perspectives. I think it's a really cute picture book. I really like the message and I recommend that you read it. Oh, and also speaking of the art, I really love Lopez's art style, just like the Tito Puente book. I think that this one is a little bit different. His art style is obviously evolving and changing from book to book, but I really enjoy his art style. So I'm definitely gonna be looking out for more picture books with his art. And the last picture book that I have to talk about today is called Grandma's Chocolate, El Chocolate de Abuelita. And this is written by Mayra Price. It's illustrated by Lisa Fields. So Mayra Price is a Mexican author. So this is on voices. And this is a bilingual picture book. It has both the English and Spanish paragraphs on each page. This is a story about this little girl. Her name is Sabrina. Her grandmother has visited her from Mexico. And every time she comes from Mexico, she comes with all these little trinkets and artifacts. And one day she makes her hot chocolate and she's really curious about this hot chocolate and her ancestors and her grandmother starts to tell her the story about the origins of the cacao beans and how the Aztecs and the Mayans used to use it as currency. And this little girl asks if she can be a Mayan princess and her grandmother says yes, as long as you wear this traditional garment and she pulls it out of her suitcase. And I love this a whole hell of a lot. It t speaks about the indigenous origins to something like chocolate that we all enjoy, but maybe don't know about that children may first be introduced to in a book like this. It's also a picture book that is utterly enchanting and that shows the relationship between a granddaughter and her abuela. That's always gonna be a soft spot for me. That's always gonna be something that I enjoy. And I also think that it explores the importance of oral tradition and on passing on this a history from generation to generation that may not be told any other way that you may not find in history books. That's, I think, something that I really enjoyed seeing. This may be the hardest book for you to find if you're interested in reading because it is published originally, at least, by a very small press. It was originally published by Arte Publico Press and specifically by their children's imprint called Pinata Books. And I wanted to mention that specifically because that could be a good resource if you are looking for more Latinx books. It's a small press out of Houston, Texas that prints and celebrates Latinx Hispanic culture and representation in their books. So really excited to find more of their work and I'm glad that I read this. Okay, so that is my wrap up of some recent Latinx picture books. I really love all, all these stories actually. I think that I had a really great group of books to pick from this year excited to read more and I hope that you saw something in this video that you might want to pick up or maybe gift to a little one in your life. If you like this video I can do more as I read more and yeah that's all that I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.